I myself, I'm Matt Gianotti. I'm the head of transaction services sales at uh, NatWest for corporates and institutionals, um, looking after large businesses that look after in, in the UK. Um, and have been doing this for about 10 years. Uh, and uh, for me, this is one of the biggest changes we're going to see in the payments industry. In fact, within the next five years, the major uh, sort of uh, payments infrastructure across the globe in both the UK, Europe, and the US will be migrating to the ISO 20022. As an emerging global standard, it's something that we need to get our heads around. And whilst there's many benefits to it, and, and we can definitely we'll be talking through that in, in due course, what we'll find there's also a need for all businesses such as yourselves to be ready to make change, some changes to processes and technology to make sure you're ready for it. Um, with changes coming to the Bank of England's CHAPS system, uh, I'm very uh, happy to welcome as one of my panel guests, James Southgate from the Bank of England. He'll be talking through some of their plans and what's to come. Um, I'm equally joined by uh, Russell Jones from SWIFT. He's going to be talking through some of the changes and benefits that, uh, that we'll see also across cross-border payments um, and, and ISO 2022 will bring to that. And finally, I'm joined by Debbie Hoskins, uh, my colleague from NatWest, uh, scheme owner for wholesale payments, who will be talking through the NatWest um, sort of side of this journey and, and where we've slot into the ISO 2022 journey. Hi, my name's uh, James Southgate. Uh, I am senior manager for the RTGS renewal program, um, which is renewing all the infrastructure between uh, uh, our RTGS system, our main accounting system, and CHAPS, the high value payment system um, on which it runs. Um, so uh, it's a big project. Um, the current uh, system dates from 96. Um, and as part of this, we are moving over to the new ISO 20022 standard, which is being adopted by um, uh, a variety of infrastructures worldwide over the next um, two to three years. My name is Russell Jones. Um, I work for SWIFT. Um, I'm based in London. Um, my background is actually global custody. I don't quite know how I got into payments, but at some point in time, um, I did. Um, my role at SWIFT is really a part of the senior management team looking after uh, key customer relationships um, and also helping um, a, a, an awareness campaign um, to everybody in the community about some big changes that are going on. Um, just as a reminder, um, SWIFT is a cooperative. It's owned by the banks financial services companies it was set up more than 40 years ago um, so far there's more than 11,000 institutions using swift today in more than 200 countries we cover all currencies um, swift transports um, the annual value of global gdp every three days just to give you an idea of how much in value is moved and that value can move in seconds uh, so messages get transferred across the SWIFT network very rapidly. Thank you very much. My name's Debbie Hoskins and I work for NatWest Group. I've got over 20 years in financial services, in consulting, exec change director, and I'm now the product scheme owner for wholesale payments here at NatWest Group. And hence why I'm here today to talk about ISO 20022, because I'm responsible for the bank for in implementing that for, for our customers. Um, Russell, if you don't mind, I'll come to you first. What is ISO 20022 and what will it accomplish? All right. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. So what is ISO 20022? Um, ISO 20022 is um, a standard. Um, it's a language. So the standard is registered as ISO 20022. So um, various different data elements that would go into a payment are registered under that banner. Um, and it's transportable in a, an extensible markup language. Um, and it gives flexibility um, on content, but also certainty in what that content represents. Um, so the ISO 20022 has been um, adopted by a number of different uh, market infrastructures. So central banks, for example, around the world. Um, there's more than 70 um, projects from those central banks to adopt the ISO 20022 standards. So basically to change the language of payments in their markets. Um, and the cross-border piece, the correspondent banking piece, which is where SWIFT sits, um, is also moving to this ISO 20022 standard. So what is it? To answer it and again in a nutshell, um, it's a payment language. Okay, it's a payment language that everybody's gonna need to adjust towards. Now, the benefits very briefly um, are giving certainty on payments. So 
originator and end beneficiary, for example, will be clear. There will be less chance of any kind of information truncation. In fact, we think that there probably won't be any truncation in the ISO 20022 standards. So that helps meet um, regulatory requirements in terms of reporting um, originator and end beneficiary information, for example. Okay. Um, there'll also be benefits in um, uh, data mining um, and in business intelligence um, that uh, banks will be able to provide towards their customers. So that's a some insight into some of uh, uh, some of what will improve over time, and it will help remove friction in payments as well. Uh, so if you've got more certainty in the data, payments should be able to speed up. Um, is that okay, Matt? Perfect. Thank you very much. And, and okay. James, um, if I come to you, do you see? Well, I suppose you you agree with what Russell's just said there. But is there anything from a Bank of England perspective that you would uh, you'd say ISO will help accomplish? Yeah, I I mean I totally agree with um uh, with what Russell said. I think the key thing I I would emphasise from a business point of view is that this is a is literally a once in a generation change of messaging language. Um, the MT standard that Swift uses and the Bank of England uses for chats basically dates from the late 70s. Um, and actually the the um, uh, language used by BAC standard 18 um, actually dates from 1968. So it really is a big once in a generation change. And um, the key thing is that it is you can c carry more data and it is in a much more structured form um, because we have this ISO 20022 data dictionary which basically lists all the fields and says what they can be used for. Um, and, and they are both kind of machine and human readable. Um, so, so it really is an important change. Um, and, you know, I, I suspect something we'll be using now for the next 30 or 40 years. Fantastic, thank you, James. I think you're absolutely right. It's, it is generational change. It's quite fantastic. Debbie, if you don't mind, I come to you. Um, so what do you see the key opportunities for businesses being uh, and what can they benefit from? So, you know, we, we've heard what might be changing, but what can businesses and our audience really benefit from? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Another great question. And it's something I get asked all the time, to be honest. And James and Russell have um, touched touched on some of the benefits as well. And for those that have been reading our brochures, we, we've also included information in, in there about some of the benefits and we'll continue to do that in the forthcoming brochures as well. But I see ISO 20022 is going to bring a, a wide variety of benefits, things like improved processing efficiencies, improved SDP, reduction in rejections and ejections, but ultimately this is going to re reduce costs and who doesn't want that year on year and what is it that we're looking for? As we know, ISO 20022, it is a global open standard. It's going to be adopted by most banks in over 70 countries. And, and that's going to really open up that interoperability and possibility. That's absolutely essential in the new connected and always on, on world. So if you think about it, all these organisations, as, as James references, are going to be looking at those message formats, going to be looking at the infrastructure that supports the, the legacy systems as well. And over that five year period, you know, over 80 percent of our payments are going to be on the ISO 20022 message standard. So you can really start to see that over the short, medium and long term, those benefits are going to start evolving. But there was really one key point that I really wanted to get across today and to really maximise the benefits that ISO 20022 are going to bring is going in this with a mindset of this is strategic, not a mandatory deliverable. It absolutely is. There's dates that we have to hit and we will hit, but you need to be looking at this as part of your core organisation data strategy. How can you really use that enhanced data to really maximize the benefits? How do you automate? How do you innovate? And how do you use the data to make those key business decisions as well? And one of the things we've, um, we've looked into, so BAME interviewed 400 companies. And one of the findings of that was that companies that had those advanced data strategies were five times quicker in making business decisions than their peers that didn't. 
So it's a real missed opportunity if we don't use this enhanced data. And I really sympathise with that because earlier in my career, sort of really early, trying to make key business decisions, you just couldn't get the data to extract that data. So again, really a missed opportunity if we don't use the enhanced data that's going to be at our fingertips. So you really need to maximise data. Look at the business, business value, the opportunities that it can deliver change your mindset from mandatory to strategic and get yourself informed on what does it mean for you and your organization. What, what are the timelines for the migration to ISO 2022? All right, okay, so um, the bit that SWIFT's involved in is the cross-border piece, so correspondent banking. Um, and the timelines for correspondent banking uh, starting on uh, November 2022, so you know, not that far away. Um, and there'll be a migration plan, so what we call coexistence between MT and ISO 20022 out to 2025. Um, and during that time, we'll be migrating um, the cross-border, the correspondent banking piece of um, the financial payments flow um, from um, the existing MT to ISO 20022. Now, there's also um, timelines as well. Um, for many different domestic schemes and systems, uh, one of which is the Bank of England. I'm sure that James will talk about that in a minute. Um, so, you know, as Debbie and I have said, there's more than 70 schemes worldwide that are moving to. Some have already done that. Um, some have plans to do that. Also, during this um, period between um, 2022 and 2025. As I think that probably answers where the SWIFT piece fits in. And uh, I'll hand it over to you, Matt, and to James. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. And, and James, as, uh, as Ross alluded to there, obviously Chaps has some um, timelines as well. Would you mind uh, you know, helping our audience understand those timelines? Sure, so um, um, Russell mentioned the November date and, th and that is important still to Chaps because of course, um, a lot of customers will actually use the correspondent network to um, send their message uh, to their bank to say, can you make a CHAPS payment um, on my behalf? Um, so that is an important date. But but in terms of the CHAPS infrastructure itself, there are there are two key dates. Um, the first is June 20, uh, 2022, so, so now only 10 months away. And that is effectively when we move the CHAPS network over to the ISO, ISO 20022 network. And um, that probably won't be visible to customers of banks because it's actually the banks and the Bank of England's infrastructure and how they talk to each other. And actually, during that period, we will still be um, communicating with each other using an MT-like ISO message effectively. So still on a like-for-like -like basis with uh, for now. In November, then SWIFT will enable ISO and enable it in its full form. Um, in, in November 22, so people can start sending enhanced data. Um, but we will then move basically as soon as it's safe to do so afterwards, um, because there are lots of different transition events the banks are having to manage. Um, so we expect at the beginning of February 2023, that's when we will enable the full enhanced messaging in chaps. Um, and, and as Russell says, the lots of different infrastructures going live at different times. Um, the ECB will go live at roughly the same time as SWIFT um, in November 2022. Um, we are going live at roughly the same time as Singapore, I think, in February 2023. Um, and then the Federal Reserve um, and CHIPS, the US systems, um, that I don't think they've confirmed their dates, but they're looking at the end of 2023 maybe early 24. So this is a big sequence. Um, as Russell says, um, the idea is that everyone is ISO native effectively by November 2025. Um, and indeed, we are keen to take advantage of that and start requiring additional data in, in, in CHAPS payments from that point forward. Perfect. Thank you, James. Um, but Debbie, actually, remaining on the uh, timelines question, I suppose it's from a NatWest perspective, do you see us uh, sort of fitting in with those timelines? Because obviously what we've heard is that there's a range rather than a specific date for certain elements. So where do you see NatWest sitting in that? 
Yes, no, thanks, Matt. No, James is absolutely right. For for you listening on, on the call now, it's NatWest will be ready for, for all of those dates. The, the like for like go live with the Bank of England June 2022, then you will see no, no difference. So you can continue sending the MT messages as you do today. We will be including more information. There's information in brochure two. There'll be more detailed information in brochure three about any changes or specific changes that you do need to make. It's important to know in November 2022 that you do need you do need to be able to receive MX messages, but continue you can continue to, to send MT. But as I say, there will be more information in in brochure three and there is some in brochure two as well so but yes we're on we're on track we've got all of those time time scales and um not just the chats and cbpr plus but the the others that james mentioned as well perfect thanks, thanks. thank you debbie um sticking with you then debbie actually um obviously with the, there sounds like a lot of information to to read up on what support and resources do we have available to our customers so that we can share with them to, to help them inform themselves yeah, so um, there, there is a wealth of information out there and obviously you can speak to your RMs as well. As I've mentioned already, there's been brochures already issued on, on the journey that we're, we're going to be going on with ISO 20022. So they're available on our website. There's FAQs. We've also got a ISO mailbox, ISO support email address that you can email with any questions that you may have. We're on Twitter, we're, we're on um, LinkedIn as well. So please feel free to use the social media channels that we've got available. The external to NatWest as well, there, there is a series of training material on the swift.com website and Russell not to put you on the spot, but maybe you can explain some of those um, resources that are available as well. But a, a read that I would recommend if you haven't already is actually the, the Dummies Guide to ISO 20022. It's, um, it's a really helpful guide. It's a Dummies Guide. And I, if you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend it. Perfect. Thank you, Debbie. And, and, and a good segue to Russell as well. I think, Russell, if you don't mind, I did see an email from Swift, I think it was yesterday, where there was a lot of different training courses that you had. So it'd be good to see what you have available. Yeah, of course. Um, we, we've got supporting material um, to help everybody in the community. So all 11,000 um, consumers of, of SWIFT services. And as Debbie said, um, yeah, we do have uh, training material available. Um, a lot of it is based um, on, on desk, uh, desktop. Um, so you can basically sign up and join a session, um, run through it. Um, there'll be sort of questions at the end to check for understanding, etc. Um, and we have a, a broad selection of um, training courses like that available. Um, we can also do, um, you know, sort of like bespoke stuff um, and training uh, uh, for customers as well for you all. Um, you'd need to contact um, uh, your relationship manager at Swift to, to, to arrange that, but that, that's available as well. So, and FAQs, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that as a, a, a community of organizations, uh, we're sharing that freely with Nat West, um, and Nat West is able to utilize that information as well to provide um, everybody attending this webinar um, very good information as well on, on what, what to expect from this program of change over the next few years. Awesome. Uh, and um, Debbie, I think I'm right in saying that this is the first in, in a number of webinars we'll be running as well. So from a from a updates perspective, we hope to have more of these hosted calls uh, and, and webinars to, to keep everyone informed to make sure they know what's going on. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. How could I forget that? <laughs> absolutely. Well, look, I think yeah, there's a host, there's a whole host of information that uh, that people can provide or, or find that we have provided, uh, and hopefully after this call. Uh, a number of you will be able to look at those. I certainly would recommend also the brochures. I think they, they're full of information in a nice bite-sized way of, of, of going through the detail. Russell, I think this is for you. Uh, what testing is available for ISO 20022? Are we able to provide test samples of the new message formats? Great, yeah, super question. Um, yes, um, you are able to test. Um, there's different facets in which you can do that. Um, we do have a testing portal. Um, which you can sign up to. Information on that is freely available on swift.com. Um, the other thing um, that is available is um, something that we call My Standards, um, 
where banks create um, their payment um, guidelines for their customers and the bank customers can test against those also in the testing portal. So it becomes, for example, the NatWest flavor of the message guidelines and a testing portal for NatWest customers to test against. So those would probably be the key ways um, in which um, any institution would want to prepare themselves um, from a test point of view um, to be ready for ISO 20022. Okay, thanks, Russell. And Debbie, did, did you want to add anything on, um, I suppose, on the Swift My Standard side of things in terms of NatWest and what we, we plan to do and host on that? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, there will be more information included in, in brochure three. There is some information in brochure two just to um, signpost people to that. So Swift are introducing called um, a, a Swift sparring partner. So it, it is something that we're going to sign up to. It's it's not there yet, but as, as Russell said, it will be the, the NatWest schemas that we we will upload into there and it'll be something that you can use to then test test against as well so as i said more details will be in brochure three it is something that we will be using and it's something where you need to be registered on fin plus as well but as i said more details will be forthcoming perfect thank you debbie um right here's another question uh debbie maybe stay with you uh will netwest be using a translation service from swift some great questions coming in, Matt. So, um, so, so, um, yes, potentially. So, again, we we are working through through our designs. We're we're looking at um, in house solutions. We are looking at the TMP as as well. So, again, it it will be information that we we share with customers on what will we will be using. But it is definitely something that we are considering at the moment. Thanks, Matt. Great, thank you. Um, James, I feel like I've left you out a little bit. Let's, uh, let's bring in a Bank of England type question. So when will we, as in we the business or, or businesses, when will we need to start sending MX messages for chats? Uh, yeah, another good question. Um, important, I think, to, to, to split the payments chain between two parts. So NatWest as a bank will need to start sending the Bank of England MX messages in June 22. That's our kind of back end uh, move over to ISO. Um, customers will be able to send NatWest messages, I assume, from November 22. Um, albeit that actually we only want enhanced data from February 2023. Um, so um, actually, there won't be a must date because um, if NatWest continues to offer translation services for, for an interim period, um, then um, you can continue to send MT. But if you want to make use of ISO and use things like structured addresses, tagging invoice numbers, um, you know, getting that kind of STP experience for, for the receiving end as well of your payment, um, that will need to be from February 2023 um, because an MT message can't carry um, the extra information that will be possible um, with the um, enhanced message. So, so, so that for chaps is when we're encouraging uh, people to, in particular, to start using um, ISO, although it will still be okay to send MT length messages um, for probably at least another year. We're only thinking about mandating certain data um, from spring 2024. And actually then it's probably not likely to be stuff that end users would be sending. Um, it's more stuff for financial institutions for the transactions between themselves. Um, certainly by um, November 2025, um, when SWIFT switches off the MT standard, we and other infrastructures are very keen to mandate enhanced data. So, you know, that will become a real endpoint. But I'd encourage you to be thinking earlier than that. Um, and as soon as close as to February 2023 as you as you can. I completely agree. And I think um, Debbie may be coming to you with a similar sort of questions. You know, I suspect we will be supporting customers to try and migrate as soon as possible. Is that correct? Yeah, that is. And again, as I mentioned before, we 
we're working through the fine detail. As I mentioned, no changes for June 2022. The, um, yeah, from November 2022, you need to be able to receive MX, but send in, we can continue with, with the MT as well. We will work with you. And as, as Jim says, you know, the absolute end point is 2025. But again, back to my earlier statement about mandatory mindset or strategic mindset, we really, we really need to make the, the most of this and the opportunities that that enhanced data will bring ahead of 2025. We really need to start thinking about it now. Thanks, Mike. Perfect. Great. And, and I think this is a, probably a quick answer considering what you just said, but there's a question around starting from June 2022, can we continue sending out MT format uh, to, to NatWest for chats? I suspect the answer is yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Perfect. Thank God. So, I mean, that, I suppose, fills people with comfort that actually they can continue to do what they're doing today. Uh, and I think, James, you mentioned earlier, and, and it's a term that we hear a lot, is like for like. Do you want to maybe just describe like for like, what exactly we mean by that? Um, yes. Yeah, so like for like is effectively, it's an ISO message. It's an ISO 20022 format message. So what was an, an MT103 becomes a, a PAX008 in the new language. So that's a customer payment. Um, but effectively, the fields that you use, instead of having the full range, um, as you will do in the um, new and enhanced world, it's just limited to those and to the size of those that are in the existing MT message. So that just means that you can directly map an MT across to an ISO message and also means, importantly, that you don't receive more information um, via chats than you would in an MT message um, until February 2023. Um, Debbie very rightly pointed out that, of course, you need to be ready from November 22 because some international payments, particularly those from the euro area, uh, may start including um, enhanced data um, because they move over fully in November 22. Um, but you will see a gradual ramping up of volumes, I expect, on your international payments as more and more systems cut across over over kind of 22 to 24 period. Yeah, you're very right, James. And I think I can see there's a number of questions, so it's probably worth addressing them. Um, we've obviously talked about chaps and we've talked about cross-border uh, through, through what Russell was talking about. Um, there's a number of questions saying, what about other payment schemes? Will they be using ISO 20022? such as backs, faster payments, or other payment types. Um, Debbie, I mean, would you have a, a view on what payment types are actually captured by this new new messaging system? So, as I said, it's going to be, by the end of five years, it'll be 80% of the payments. So, yeah, fast payments, you know, pay, NPA, pay.uk, they will be moving on to ISO 2022. We are working with um, pay.uk and we will be building out our plans accordingly over sort of the, the coming years. But that's that's not we haven't got any firm dates with respect to the other payment schemes. But the, the intention is they will also be moving to the new standard. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I can see also there's a number of questions about uh, when will the brochures be distributed or, or can we reiterate or re reissue the, the brochures. Um, I think, Debbie, I think we were right in saying the, the brochures, well, were sent out, but also they are available on our main uh, internet page. So the, the page that we host for ISA 20022, where you'll find various bits of information in there, uh, but equally you'll probably also find the recording of this in, in due course. Uh, but both the financial institutions brochure as well as the corporates brochures are, are available on, on the website so you can access them now. We will be sending the links around uh, after this session on the email that we send around uh, to, to all the registered, user, uh, registered attendees uh, with details of how to access those. Um, we have a couple of questions about our uh, bank line channels uh, and as such we do have another panelist who's <laughs> joined in, um, Mar Martin Fulder uh, from, our, from our channels team. To help support some of the questions we have about Bankline specifically and Bankline Direct. Um, Martin, uh, if you're there, um, there's a question. <laughs> Perfect, there you are. There's a question about uh, customers using Bankline today for their payments. Uh, will they be compatible for ISO 20022? Um, and, and do they need to make any changes to the way they make payments today? Yeah. 
Thank you. So as with so much in life, it depends. So if you make single payments through Bankline today, yes, just continue what you're doing to raise and approve those payments. Now, if additional data becomes mandatory or optional, we'll provide the fields for that data to be entered and we'll clearly signpost that and communicate that well in advance. Now, if you upload payments into, in bulk into Bankline, we'll provide the ability to upload that data in ISO compatible formats. But we'll also, certainly for quite an extended period of time, provide the existing formats that you use today. So those, if you've got your Excel spreadsheet that you use today to upload those payments, there won't be a mandatory requirement immediately to change that format you use, although clearly over time you will have to migrate to using the ISO compatible formats. Now, when it comes to reporting, so if we talk about statements, transactions, advices, we'll also provide downloads of that data in ISO compatible formats. But again, for a period of time, you'll be able to download in exactly the same format you get today. So it's very much about giving the option of having this new data. But if you're not quite ready, then you can continue for a period of time to, to, to do what you're doing today. Now, clearly, there will come a time when you need to migrate and there, there is a time where it won't be mandatory, but there will be a data or truncation risk of information not being there. So it's worth pointing that out, that there is a need to migrate over time. But we're, we're, talking, we're talking years and obviously things like faster payments, we're, we're, we're looking to implement those changes around 2024. So, so it's a multi-year program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, James, I actually got a question for you. Um, and this question is regarding the Bank of England's white paper on data truncation risk, which, which obviously has just been mentioned there. Um, between November 2022 and February 2023, what is the consequence of non-compliance? And if, if it is correct to understand that the compliance with this principle is on a best efforts basis, uh, and this customer is an indirect participant of the chat. So, so what, what's I suppose what's the what's the consequence of non-compliance? Right. I um, first of all apologise that I'm quite quiet. I am trying to talk as loudly as possible. Um, I, I don't know why my mic is playing up. Um, so, this data truncation risk issue is probably worth ex explaining in a little bit more detail. Now. We, because not everyone can go live in November 22, I mean, you know, if all the systems tried to move over on the same date, effectively, there wouldn't be enough weekend for the for all the banks around the world to come back up um, on the Monday. So, so we, there is about a 10 week period where SWIFT is on enhanced data, allowing enhanced data on its correspondent network. Um, but we can only send like for like through chaps. Um, now, effectively, what we've done is among the direct participants, we've agreed a protocol um, for how um, we will manage this period. And, and what will happen is that, first of all, NatWest customers and customers of all the banks for chaps payments will be encouraged to only send like for like data during that period. Um, so, so wait until February 2023 to send enhanced data. Nevertheless, you can send enhanced data. Um, it's allowed. Um, but what there will be is that there will be a set of rules effectively that truncates the message down from enhanced to like for like. And that will always prioritize the key fields from an, a money laundering and sanctions perspective. So things like personal identities, um, addresses, things like that, those will always get across. But other information, the new information might get dropped. So effectively, that protocol is, um, uh, is um, agreed between the direct participants. 
it's on a voluntary basis, but all the DPs have either signed up to it or have said they're going to sign up to it. Um, and um, we will be monitoring that, even if it's not a formal rule of the CHAP system, uh, we will be carefully monitoring that. So that is the way we expect it to work. And actually, there will be more comms coming out of this um, soon. Um, we're just literally awaiting a final few signatures, um, mainly people to come back from holiday, um, in order to uh, then say everyone's signed up um, and then publish what the uh, what the protocol is. Thank you, James. Very comprehensive answer, and hopefully that answered the uh, the audience member's question. Um, there's a couple more questions here, um, perhaps Martin or Debbie uh, in, in collective to answer this question. Um, with regards to uh, when will we make format templates available, um, that could be, I suspect, potentially on, on my standards, as Debbie mentioned earlier, um, but equally for customers who perhaps use either third-party providers to create file uploads for them for Bankline Direct or Bankline, um, or, or indeed, um, you know, if they're doing in-house developments, when will we make templates available for them to use for this new ISO format? Great. Um, I'm happy to answer that. So mentioned previously, my standards is the source of truth for this data. We will be creating and uploading the my standards content for all the, uh, the payment types over a period of time with the intention that at the latest by February next year, we will have all those guides live and ready for uh, people to use and test again. So you can obviously test the syntax, but we'll also be looking to enhance that testing capability that's available within my standards. So we'll be drip feeding them over time, but in short, the answer is to have that completed by February next year at the latest. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, and, and, a, and a similar question, and I think it's come up a few times here, so it, it's probably one that's worth uh, addressing. So a number of audience members are asking the question, they use Bankline, as in just Bankline, not Bankline Direct. Um, do I need to do anything? And I think we need to respond to that. So yes, but uh, if you don't mind articulating what that is, Martin. Yeah, uh, the simple answer is not necessarily. So it depends how you use Bankline. So... What is Bankline? It, it's online banking. It's a user experience that allows you to make payments and see payment data, your statements, your transactions, et cetera, et cetera. If you are a relatively simple user of that service, then you, you just go and make payments, move money as you do today. You will see your statements and your transactions as you do today. The great advantage of ISO 20022 is that there'll be more data. So it's a simple thing such as when you expand a transaction in your statement, there'll be more information. So be easier to understand exactly what that payment is. Um, so depending on how you're using it, you don't have to do anything. There's just more information available when you do use it. Perfect, thank you very much. Russell, if you don't mind, I might come to you now. Um, so there's a couple of questions actually for you. So first one is hopefully an easy one. Swift smart training is good, but what if I have a question that's not covered in the training material? Where can I get that answered? Okay. Um, if you have a question that's not covered in the training material, we have extensive FAQs on swift.com. That's a great place to go to. They're interactive. Um, you can also send a question in via swift.com to our ISO program team. Um, and they will come back to you. So in a nutshell, that's how we can support you. Excellent. And, and the other question for you, actually, which is more perhaps a, a philosophical, but um, there appears to be some differences in the layout required for MT messages between different banks, i.e. the layout of an MT 101 is different with RBS as it might be with the HSBC. Will ISO overcome this? We're hoping it will. We're hoping it will. Um, there is... Um, a bunch of um, working groups and advisory groups um, that um, are funded by industry practitioners from various banks um, to try and um, stick to common usage of MT as well as now MX. Um, 
the beauty of MX is um, it's really machine readable, very machine readable, um, and ISO standard and the libraries that come along with it are also incredibly machine readable. So even though there may be some variations from bank to bank, um, it's accommodated very, very well by um, you know modern technologies. So I don't think you're going to get away with having some variances. I mean, from scheme to scheme as an example, from the you know chaps to target to to what happens in Singapore or Australia, um, there are also flavours for those domestic markets. So um, I, those will prevail because there are different you know, needs in those markets. Yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah, as much as we try and get to a standard, it's always quite difficult, isn't it? Um, another question here, which is um, perhaps not necessarily aimed at any anyone in, in particular, but maybe Debbie or, or, or Martin, you might want to take this one. Are ERP suppliers, so Oracle, SAP, Workplace, Sage, et cetera, making ISO 20022 compatible formats for their products they sell? Now, obviously, not having one of the providers here on the call help, you know, helps to be maybe giving a, a uh, uh, an estimated answer as opposed to a, uh, an exact answer. But Martin, do you think you know, working with these type of providers, they will be doing that? I suspect they will. Absolutely. Uh, these standards are international standards. They've been known for years uh, the ERP providers are obviously keen to support their customers, and we, we're very much aware, speaking to the likes of SAP or Oracle, that you know that they they are making enhancements to their their, their systems. Perfect. Thank you. Um, this is probably a, a rather technical question, but maybe Russell, I don't know if, if it's one for you. Um, will ISO twenty zero two allow for longer beneficiary names? particularly looking at um, some overseas beneficiaries, often names are very long and hard to fit in with the existing MT messaging. Yes, in a nutshell, yes, that's the short answer. Um, it's one of the reasons why um, uh, uh, moving to ISO 20022 makes sense. Um, the fields are much longer. Um, you'll be able to stick very long beneficiary names and originator names in, um, and that has um, obviously uh, benefits in terms of... Um, uh, uh, richer data, um, certainty, so that you know who you're actually making a payment on behalf of, et cetera. Um, and obviously, it, when it comes down to any kind of reporting that you have to make to regulators or overseers, um, you have a clean set of information. So yeah, but, uh, you can carry much longer beneficiary and originator information. Perfect. Um, and actually, that's probably another question for you, Russell. Um, uh, or even more broadly to, to the wider panel, actually. So if this customer is saying they have multiple banks they deal with and have payments and receipts activity with, with multiple banks, will it mean I have more work to do than most? Um, and I suspect that's probably linked also to, you know, banks taking perhaps different approaches to the migration over to ISO 20022. So how do we see, and, and indeed perhaps both um, Russell and James, uh, how do you see other banks um, migration plans progressing and, and do we see that being perhaps different timescales uh, and therefore having customers who've asked the question for example today uh, having to manage multiple different platforms do you want me to go first okay um i think i think i think there um if you're using multiple banks um, obviously you need to talk to each bank and find out what their plans are um and also in how far um they're able to um shield you um, from the changes that are coming, right? So, I mean, I think we've heard today that that West is uh, uh, well prepared um, and looking to shield customers from all of these changes for the sort of like um, interoperable time frame from um, November twenty twenty two out to twenty twenty five. Um, and I think you need to, to, you know, talk to your banks, find out what their plans are, and then talk to your technology providers and find out um, how they can help accommodate. Um, what each bank is doing. But from what we observe so far, um, uh, banks are pretty much um, looking to do similar things. So you shouldn't see, you shouldn't be hearing you know, a, 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 a pole difference uh, from one bank provider to the next. Perfect. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, uh, just, just to add to that as well, um, uh, when you are sending a message to your bank via SWIFT, effectively, they should all be following the um, new CBPR plus guidelines, which is the kind of standard for correspondent banking. Um, 
we as a high as chaps effectively have made sure that our schema is compatible with cbpr plus so actually the banks when they send the message to us will be re we will be requiring the same thing and it will be the same format essentially as the format that you will be sending to your banks as well so um, we hope for compatibility with that. You, you know, you can get differences, particularly in international payments, where some nations require additional information. Um, the other thing we've done is that we've worked very hard with Pay UK over the last couple of years to make sure that when they are ready to implement ISO, what they implement for the credit message um, in the NPA um, will be very, very similar to what you will need for your ISO message for CHAPS. So again, doing this work for CHAPS should also mean that you are probably 95% ready for the NPA um, when it comes along at a later date. Okay, thank you very much, James. Uh, I think you're right, it's a, it's, it's a long journey, but there's, there's a lot to do. Um, but gladly, a lot of people working together at yeah, industry forums and whatnot to try and uh, consolidate as much as possible some of this to make sure it's as easy as possible to understand. Martin, I might come back to you actually with perhaps the final question because I'm conscious of time. We're, we're almost up at the hour. Um, some, some practical questions from customers. Uh, two, specifically one is, will we still receive MT950 message statements? And I suspect we will have a something to move over to. And, and if you've got the name of that, then great. And the second question, just to mull over, is... Um, when will inbound 940s, uh, MT940 messages, be moved to the new structure? So, yes, you will still continue to be able to receive those MT messages. Um, as we mentioned before, it, it, the, the parallel running period, there will be an option to receive uh, the, the new formats of those messages or the legacy formats for a, a parallel running period of time, which we intend to be relatively extended, um, very much trying to work with you guys and all our customers to understand what's going to help you run your businesses uh, most effectively. And sorry, Matt, what's the second question? The second question is um, about 940s. So uh, when will they move to the new structure? So effectively, when, when will it be ISO compliant? So in terms of reporting information, we are looking to uh, deliver that around uh, November and February. Uh, so November 22, February 23. Those are the key dates when we're talking about the reporting data. Uh, and obviously, the February date is when you'll be um, when people will be sending and receiving that enhanced data. So we'll we'll have the formats available, uh, but won't have additional data, which you can obviously use to make sure your systems are ready to receive that. And when that enhanced data is available, you can then consume that that data. And again, if you think about minimizing change. We want to be as ready as we can be for those future payment types when we're thinking about being ready for faster payments, for example. Or if you're uploading payments into bank line, we don't want to force you to think, is this a chat payment? Is it a faster payment? There are two different ways of doing it. It's going to be one payment file, even if it's following the ISO standard, but the faster payments aren't part of the, the, the ISO mandatory requirements by that time. I think the simple answer is we're trying to give, trying to shield customers as much as possible, provide the options, but provide the enhancements that's ready for when you're ready. Very comprehensive. Thank you very much, Martin. Look, I think we are probably at time, conscious of everyone's time this morning. Um, and I think just to summarize what we've heard today, we've probably heard what ISO is, uh, ISO 20022, what it is, what's about, when's it going to happen. Um, most importantly, it's, uh, you know, the benefits that it brings to businesses will be quite extensive, um, but, but obviously some changes may need to be uh, put in place for, for processes that you're using today, uh, be that payment creation or, or reporting. Um, I think what, what is also clear is the timelines are, you know, they start theoretically from, from the chat's perspective, June 2022, but they are quite extensive across the various different schemes. So making sure you read the information that we will be providing to you is, is, is quite key. 
Um, NatWest is here to support you where you need. So please do reach out if you need any additional information. I appreciate there's a, a lot of questions that you've asked today and, and, and many which we haven't managed to get to in, in the time allotted, but we will be uh, picking up and answering those in due course. As Debbie mentioned earlier, there's an FAQ which may well answer some of the questions on our internet website as well. It, it leaves me with just a few more things to say, which is firstly, thank you to uh, Russell and James and Debbie for taking the time to join the panel, providing their information, which was very um, very comprehensive, very uh, industry leading, and uh, hopefully has helped everyone shape a, a better idea of what to do when it comes to uh, being ready for your ISO 20022. Uh, I would like to think if we ran a poll again at the end of the call that uh, that more people might say they are somewhat informed of, of what's happening. Um, and I'm sure in, in, in the next months and, and years, we'll, we'll, you know, as we progress through this longer term migration process, that, uh, that more and more will come out and more information will be provided so that everyone's as well informed as they can. And also, Martin, thanks for joining the, the, the question and answers at the end. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, appreciate you all taking an hour out of your day to, to listen to this and uh, and please join the next session of these uh, next one in the series where we're going to further detail thank you very much everyone